Hey foodies, Chill Brown Vegan here. Welcome back to another vegan recipe video. Tis the season for pumpkin, and today I have a very special video for you. I will be eating nothing but pumpkin for the next 24 hours. Okay, so maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. It's not gonna be 24 hours, more like from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, but you get the deal. So I went out to the store and I got these lovely pumpkins here. They look delicious. Now, I like to eat my pumpkins with a little bit of salt and pepper, nothing too fancy, so uh, here goes, first bite. Mmm. Just kidding, I'm not actually going to be eating this pumpkin. What I'm going to be using is pumpkin puree. So if you like any of these recipes and you do want to try this, just be sure to get 100% pumpkin. Do not get the pumpkin pie spice. That's gonna just throw off all the flavors. In this video, I'm going to show you three main meals, two snacks, two drinks, and a dessert. So without further ado, let's get cooking. There is no better way to start off your morning than with a hot cup of coffee. So first we are going to make pumpkin spice latte, the cult classic. So what you're gonna need is some pumpkin puree, maple syrup, plant milk of your choice, I'm using vanilla almond milk, pumpkin pie spice blend, or you can make your own, it's pretty easy, lots of recipes on the internet for that, some ground nutmeg, vanilla extract, and you coffee drinkers are gonna hate me for this, but I am using Folgers Classic Roast, which is instant coffee. I am going to be using two sticks of this coffee. So start off by pouring your plant milk into a pot. All of the ingredients and measurements will be down in the description box below, so be sure to check that out. Then I'm going to add in the pumpkin puree, some maple syrup to give it a little bit of sweetness, and then you're going to add in the pumpkin pie spice and vanilla extract. And then you're just going to whisk all of that up together and bring it to a simmer. While that is simmering away, I prepared a cup and a half of hot water for my instant coffee. You're gonna go ahead and pour all of that in. Of course, you can adjust the coffee depending on how strong you want it. But once you pour that in, you're just going to whisk that up so that it is nice and combined. Once all of the instant coffee crystals have been combined and dissolved, you're just going to pour that into that milk and pumpkin pie mixture. And then once again, you're gonna break out the whisk and just make sure that it gets nice and mixed up. At this point, you're going to wanna to very carefully give it a taste. Here, I'm adding a little bit more sweetener and a little bit more milk. Adjust it if you need to. If you don't, that's fine as well. And then mix all of that up. And then you're pretty much done. Just go ahead and get your favorite mug and it is time to serve your coffee. This turned out so good. I've actually never had pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks just because it's not, you know, vegan. But I think if you want to spice it up, add some whipped cream on top, add some marshmallows. I don't know, get creative. But it is good as is as well. This was so good and it definitely woke me up in the morning. <laughs> By now we are totally hungry so it's time to make some waffles. We are going to start off by mixing together soy milk and apple cider vinegar to make a vegan buttermilk. For your dry ingredients, you're going to need some flour, some flaxseed meal, I'm using the golden variety, but you can use the regular one as well, some baking powder, pumpkin pie spice, a couple pinches of salt, some coconut oil, melted, Okay, let's pause here for a moment. This is where I made a very grave mistake. When you're doing this recipe, make sure that when you have combined all of your dry ingredients, you whisk them all together first, then whisk all of your wet ingredients together, then mix them all together. Because I poured the wet in with the dry without combining everything first, there were clumps of pumpkin spice that would not disperse throughout the mixture. So when I bit into it, some of it would be bland, some of it would have the pumpkin pie spice and would be like a little bit, you know, too much festivities going on in your mouth. So just be sure to mix all of the dry first, mix all of the wet, then combine. Okay, you can resume. Okay, and here I'm adding in that vegan buttermilk that we just made. Go ahead and pour all of that in. And I'm adding some vanilla extract, some maple syrup to sweeten, or you could use brown sugar. And of course, you gotta have the pumpkin because we're eating pumpkin all day. So go ahead and whisk all of that together until it's nice and combined. 
You want to mix it until everything is just combined. You do not want to over mix it. And yes, the batter is going to be pretty thick. So don't worry about that. So here I've already started heating up my waffle iron. I sprayed it down with some olive oil and now I'm just pouring in the batter. A couple of ladles will do it. It is an art form, so you do have to practice to know exactly how much to put in there. But go ahead and put it in. Try not to overfill it. And then when you're done, you're just going to close it up, flip it over, and let it do its thing. When it's all said and done, you've got a waffle. Go ahead and very carefully remove it. This was obviously pretty hot, so don't touch it with your hand if you don't have to. Use as many tools to get it out as you need. And here I am, I'm just topping it. So I put on a little bit of chocolate syrup just to make it look pretty. I'm adding some hemp seeds, some walnuts, and of course some fruit. This is just some frozen fruit that I thawed out and just spread around as much as I wanted. Of course you can top it with whatever you want to top it with, but this is just what I went with. And of course the final touch was some maple syrup. And voila, we've got a pumpkin spice waffle that is delicious. It is so good. And remember what I said, make sure you mix up the dry so you don't get a mouthful of cinnamon. But otherwise it was Definitely very tasty, very light, very fluffy and soft. And I will definitely be making this again. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first snack of the day. We are going to be making a pumpkin seed trail mix. So I'm starting off with some pepitas, which are just some pumpkin seeds. Just go ahead and pour those into a bowl and then add whatever you like. I'm adding some peanuts, some pretzels, some dried cranberries, you can add any kind of dried fruit that you like, and some non-dairy chocolate chips. When you're done, just give it all a mix, and it was just as easy as that. You've got your pumpkin seed trail mix. Enjoy responsibly. In these colder months, we definitely have to stay hydrated, so I've got a hot and cold option for you. Now we're gonna make some pumpkin juice. You're going to need some apple cider, not vinegar, some pumpkin puree yet again, surprise, surprise, some kind of fruit nectar, I'm going with peach, but you could do mango or pear. And first you wanna shake up your apple cider, then pour it into a pot. This recipe is not very hard, you're basically gonna dump everything in, so I'm dumping in the pumpkin puree. Then I'm going in with that peach nectar and you're going to give it all a nice good stir. You wanna mix it up, make sure there aren't any clumps or lumps in there. And now I'm adding some spices. I'm adding some cinnamon, whisking that up. Then we're adding some nutmeg, ginger, a dash of allspice and some vanilla extract, sugar to taste, whisk it all up. Give your wrist a workout because there is no chill brown vegan recipe without a whisk. I guarantee you that. Okay, maybe not, but still. <laughs> and just like that, we got ourselves some pumpkin juice. You can have it hot or you can add some ice and have it cold. It is good either way. Just make sure you try this. This is a must try. It is so good. I have now declared that this is the official drink of fall. Next, we are going to be making some Japanese croquettes. We're going to start off with one small kabocha pumpkin. Now, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a pumpkin. It might be a squash or something, but anyway, you need a kabocha pumpkin. It's really cool because it's green on the outside, orange on the inside. You're going to cut it up into pieces and microwave it for about six minutes until it's nice and soft. And then with a sharp knife and very carefully, you may even want to let it cool down just slightly. You're going to peel the skin away from the the meat, I guess, for lack of a better word, you're gonna peel it away from the pumpkin. When you're done with that, you're going to heat up a pan and pour some oil in, and then I just chopped up about a quarter of a white onion, and I'm gonna saute that until it's nice and translucent, like so. And then once that's done, usually they would add some type of meat to it, so I'm just adding this tofu crumble that I had left over. Um, if you want the recipe for that, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, and I will be sure to share that. But anyway, you're just going to saute that all together, until everything's nice and combined, until the onion is nice and soft. Now back to the kabocha. It should be cool enough to work with, so you're gonna go ahead and mash that up with a fork. It's nice and soft, and the cool thing about the kabocha pumpkin is that it's not like our North American pumpkin. There's a lot less water content. 
it's a little more starchy like a potato it's drier a little more dense but here I am I'm just seasoning it up with some spices everything will be included down below I'm just seasoning everything to taste as you can see I'm not really measuring it I'm pretty sure I just used a little bit of salt pepper onion powder garlic powder and a little bit of curry powder once you have seasoned it to your liking, you're going to go ahead and mix everything up so that it is all nice and combined. And then we're going to add the sauteed onion and the tofu crumble. And you're going to go ahead and mix that all together. I think I used about half of what I had cooked up. You're just going to mix it up until it's a nice kind of uniform consistency. And now we're ready for the fun part. You're going to need some vegan cream cheese. I swear by Tofuti. And what you're gonna do is just grab some of that mixture you just made. You're going to roll it up in your hands. And as you can see, it is a little bit messy, but that's okay. Uh, once it has been rolled into somewhat of a ball, you're just gonna press down in the center, making a little well. And into that well, you're going to place some of that cream cheese. Just a little bit. You don't need too much, uh, like quarter teaspoon, I wanna say. Somewhere around there. Anyway, once you have that in there, you're just going to fold the ball in on itself so that the cream cheese is right smack in the middle and so you no longer see any of it. Because what we're going to do is we're going to deep fry this and we don't want all that cream cheese seeping out. So as you can see, you want the ball to look like so. You want the balls to be roughly around the same size. So here's what it looks like. I made about nine balls out of half of a kabocha pumpkin. Now we are ready to dredge. We got flour, just egg, and panko breadcrumbs. Get the plain kind, they're vegan. So you're just going to go ahead and roll the ball into the flour, into the just egg, and finally into the panko breadcrumbs. Easy as that. Once you're done, you're just gonna set it aside and do the same thing to all of your balls. <laughs> and here's what they look like. We are now ready to deep fry. Now you should have been heating up your oil all this time, hopefully you did. You're gonna go ahead and very carefully lower the balls into the hot oil. I'm using a spoon because I've had a lot of mishaps with hot oil and I'm not getting anywhere near that. So go ahead and put your little croquettes into the hot oil and then you're just gonna fry them up. You want them to get a nice brown color so I'd say give them about a few seconds in there. You don't wanna keep it in there too long. Just want it to be nice and golden brown. It should look something like this. This is exactly how you want it to look. And then you will just rinse and repeat. Do this to all of your croquettes until you are done. And here I'm just setting them on this rack to cool slightly and also to drain off some of the oil. But when you're done, you're ready to eat some croquettes. This is so good. I just put it on a bed of cabbage because that's how I ate it when I was in Japan. But it was not this kind of cabbage. But anyway, you can eat it with whatever you want. You can have it with a salad. You can just eat it by itself. They're so delicious. They're nice and crunchy, soft on the inside. And you can put whatever kind of sauce you want. You could put mayo and ketchup. I put hoisin and sriracha. In Japan, they use tonkatsu sauce. And here it is. It's nice and crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. And you got that nice little bite of cream cheese right in the middle. It's a strange combination you would think, but it is so good. I hope you give it a try. It is time for another snack, but I swear I do not eat like this on the daily. I'm just doing this to show you the recipes, but I'm making some pumpkin hummus, starting off with some dried chickpeas that I boil in water for about 45 minutes after soaking overnight or for about eight hours. Just boil them until they are tender. Alternatively, just buy a can of chickpeas. Now you don't wanna put anything hot into a blender, so you definitely wanna make sure it cools down first, but go ahead and put your chickpeas into the blender. Now we're gonna add in our spices. I do not like raw garlic, so I'm putting in some garlic powder, but if you're cool with raw garlic, go ahead and put in a couple of cloves of garlic. We're gonna add in some lovely, creamy, runny tahini, some pumpkin puree, some olive oil, and a bunch of spices. Everything will be down below. And then a little bit of apple cider vinegar, or you can use lemon juice if you have that. And then we're just gonna blend it all up. Blend it up to your desired consistency. If it's too thick, add a little water or olive oil. Now I'm just gonna make it look nice and pretty. Here I'm adding some paprika. And now I'm adding pepitas again because I have them and why not? 
and then just a little bit of olive oil. Make it look fancy. Alrighty, and now we have our pumpkin hummus. This stuff is so addicting. It's good, it's so creamy, and the pumpkin flavor really isn't overwhelming. You do get a hint of pumpkin in there, so it's really nice. Now it's time for dinner. We're almost at the home stretch. We're gonna be making some pumpkin pasta. I'm using large elbows just because I like them. They have a nice bite to them. And you can use any type of chicken flavored soup mix you like. I have some cream cheese filled with sausage. What I did first was I just crumbled up the sausage and then I'm just sauteing that until it gets nice and crispy. When that's done, I set it aside and here I'm just boiling up the macaroni noodles until they are soft. And now it's time to make that nice creamy sauce. I'm adding in some plant milk. And honestly, I'm just freestyling this, but I'm adding in some pumpkin puree, a lot of pumpkin puree, some cream cheese, and then I'm just mixing all of that up until it's nice and incorporated. Once that is nice and smooth, I'm adding in that chicken style broth seasoning, whatever you want to call that. Just go ahead and throw that in. And since I'm freestyling this, I'm basically just mixing and stuff and tasting it and adjusting it to how I like it. You're gonna heat it up, it's gonna to start to bubble, and now I'm adding paprika, Italian seasoning, and black pepper. All of this is to taste, and I added in some nutritional yeast as well. And just to give it a little extra oomph, I'm adding in some Vilife cheddar style shreds, just to give it a more cheesy taste. So this is almost kind of like a mac and cheese. But you're gonna go ahead and mix it all up until the cheese is nice and melted and combined, and I'm adjusting, I'm adding onion powder, garlic powder, more paprika. And I added just a little bit of agave because I, I just do that sometimes. When it tastes good for your palate, you're gonna go ahead and add in your sausage. Last minute, I decided to add in a little bit of spinach that I did press and drain all the water out first so that it did not turn that nice yellow cheesy sauce green. <laughs> and then mix it up and add in your noodles. Now I know what Cardi B means when she says macaroni in the pot. Another day, another dollar, another meal. This is like my quasi pumpkin mac and cheese with some spinach. This was fantastic, you guys. You definitely have to try this one. If you don't try anything else, you have to try this one. It is so good. I, I'm drooling thinking about it right now. And now my friends, it is time for dessert. We are making some chocolate chip pumpkin cookies. So you're going to start off with a bowl. We're gonna mix in our dry ingredients. We got our flour, baking soda, some salt, pumpkin pie spice, and then you're gonna mix all of that up together. When that is nice and combined, go ahead and set that aside. And we're gonna get another bowl. And into this bowl, we're gonna put in some dark brown sugar, some granulated sugar, some softened but not melted coconut oil. And then you're going to get a hand mixer and you're just going to blend that all together. Make sure it's pretty well blended. It might be a little bit chunky, but that's okay. So now we're gonna add in some unsulfured molasses and some vanilla extract and then we're going to mix all of that up together. Once that is all nice and mixed up, we're going to add in some coconut milk and then some pumpkin puree. And once again, we're just gonna blend everything together until it is nice and smooth and well combined. It looks kind of gross, but trust me, it's gonna get better. Now it's time to add our dry into the wet. Let's go ahead and add that in. And then I just took a spatula and kind of mixed it up because I didn't want flour to fly everywhere. So go ahead and mix that up and get the flour a little wet. And then I just went in and mixed it all up again. Now you will notice that this is going to be a very thick dough, but that's how it's supposed to be. It's gonna be thick. So here I am, I'm just dividing it into two portions because we do have some people in the family that do not eat chocolate. So half of it, I'm gonna make chocolate chip and the other half, I decided to put in some dried cranberries. And it actually turned out pretty good, so definitely try that one as well, if you like. 
but at this point I just went in with my hands and folded everything together until I felt like it was nicely distributed throughout. And then if you need to, you can always add some more. You can never have too much, right? Once you have enough chocolate chips or craisins, you're gonna go ahead and put them on a baking sheet lined with foil or parchment paper, and you're going to bake them in the oven. And when they're done, they're gonna look a little something like this. They're soft and pillowy and nice and gooey. Look at that melty chocolate. Oh my goodness, these were so good. This was the perfect way to end my 24 hour pumpkin feast. And of course, if you have any pumpkin left over, don't forget about your little ones. Pumpkin is totally safe for your little puppers. So make sure that they get some of that deliciousness as well. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching and making it to the end. All of these recipes are very delicious, somewhat nutritious, and if you're having problems in the bathroom, they are sure to relieve you of those issues. Now I know I'm eating all of these in the same day. You do not have to do this. Pick and choose what you want, eat it when you want. If you don't love pumpkin, you may never eat it again after this video. All these recipes were so, so good, so fun to make, a little time consuming, but there was a nice balance between sweet and savory, and I hope you give them a try. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more content like this. I post one to two times per week. I hope you guys are all staying happy, healthy, and safe, and most importantly warm. It's getting so cold now. Make sure you bundle up, grab some pumpkin spice latte, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.